Space, the final frontier. The voyages of the Starship Enterprise, its mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man or woman has gone before. I grew up watching Star Trek and Star Wars, reading superhero comics and science fiction books, immersing myself in a fantasy world of future technology and superpowers, and dreaming of exploring the undiscovered. As I reveled in my love of science and engineering, I found myself attracted to developing new technologies and researching new science. I dreamed of a day when I could create things that would actually beam up Scotty. While following my passions, I fell in love with a discipline called nanotechnology, a futuristic science that is everywhere and yet totally invisible to the naked eye. So what is nanotechnology? It seems to be a word that most people think means very, very small. But technically, one nanometer is one times 10 to the power of minus nine of a meter, or 100,000 times thinner than the width of your hair. 100,000 times thinner, that's one nanometer and the size of things that nanotechnologists create and push around every single day. What's ironic is to do this, we actually need very, very big machines to do very, very small things. When we class something as nanotechnology, we as scientists state that it should have at least one dimension of 100 nanometers or less, although many things are getting through the cracks by being slightly bigger and still being called nano. Nanotech is fascinating as we create materials with different shapes that have massive surface area to volume ratios, which is resulting in some very unique properties. Gold is a great example of this. At the big scale, gold is gold in color. But at the nano scale, gold can be red or even blue. Medieval artists knew this because this is where the origin of the color red in red stained glass windows comes from. Other properties such as hardness and softness, or what us engineers call stiffness, these also change, as well as electrical, magnetic, and light reflective properties. In a world where we thought we knew about most of the materials we could make things from and how they behaved, nanotech has opened the door to taking the same materials, making them much smaller, and watching them behave totally differently. Now I understand when people come to me because they are scared of nanotechnology. I mean, our lives are filled with movies and TV shows showing nanotechnology to be bad. For example, the Borg Queen in Star Trek, she uses nanotechnology to help us simulate other species. And Will Smith used nanotechnology to kill all the bad robots in iRobot. But nanotech isn't all that bad. And some of it is very, very good. Let's take your phone, for example. Less than 10 years ago, my phone only had one app. It was a great app, and it was called Snake. And to be honest, I was pretty impressed with the fact that my phone could have a game and call people on it. Obviously, we look back at these outdated phones and see how primitive they were to our current technology. Now I expect my phone not only to come with games, but also run my diary, tell me where to be, play music for me, order some food, and maybe check my emails. Oh, and I think some people still use it to make calls. This massive supercomputing capacity, which 30 years ago would have taken up the space of a room, now sits happily in my pocket. The reduction in size of the electronics behind this is due to nanotech. We're all carrying around nanotech with us every day. And I think you'll agree, it's helping you, not hindering you. So the question of whether or not you have touched nanotech today is usually an easy one. If you have a smartphone, the answer is yes. But also, if you've applied sunscreen, a moisturizer, you've also touched nanotechnology. Sunscreen used to be white in color, and you could see this as a white hue left on the skin. But thanks to reducing the size of the titanium dioxide particles from micron size, where your eye could see some of the light reflected off the particle, to nano size, where your eye can't resolve this, sunscreen now blends in, seemingly invisibly. Your razor blade, which you may think is just made from metal, also has nanotechnology on it. Sitting on top of that metal surface is a nano thickness coating of a material called DLC, or diamond-like carbon, which keeps the blade sharp and gives you a much closer shave. So are we living in a superhero movie yet? How long until we can shoot lasers out of our eyes like Superman? Well, the answer is not quite yet, but we can start to add electronic technology to surfaces such as contact lenses. Right now, the science is being used for bad by helping poker players to cheat by wearing lenses that allow marked cards to be seen and people have actually gone to prison for this offense. But the technology is also used for good by coating lenses with a nanomaterial called graphene, 
which is one thin layer of carbon atoms. This can help extend the wavelength of light that is visible so that search and rescue crews can see body heat in the dark when looking for a lost person. The Invisible Woman is also still not quite a reality, but nanotechnology has invented metamaterials. These are materials that can change the way that light waves and sound waves bounce off the surface, making them seem invisible, resulting in new ways to cloak and hide solid objects. The tricorder was a scanning diagnostic system used in Star Trek, where the patient was externally scanned to measure their health. With the creation of nanotechnology sensor printing that can be printed onto simple things like temporary tattoos and conductive nanofibers that can be woven into our clothing, they can monitor vitals such as heart rate, body temperature, as well as glucose and lactic acid production. So now we can monitor our health straight through to our smartphone. The hyperspray in Star Trek was a tool used to immunize and vaccinate without the need of needles. And this too is very close with realities such as nanotech being developed to create an inhalable flu vaccine by positively charging the nano-sized flu drug so that it sticks to your lungs and disperses the medication internally. My childhood dream of climbing walls like Spider-Man is also about to come true as we use nanotechnology combined with biomimetics, the science of copying nature to create artificial gecko feet. Geckos are amazing creatures, and their feet are so sticky that they can hold their whole body up on just one toe. But their stickiness isn't due to a glue. Instead, it's from millions of nano hairs on their feet, which results in countless bonds called van der Waals bonds. On their own, they're very weak, but lots of them together are strong enough to support large amounts of weight. By copying their feet and using a technology called 3D printing, we can now create the power of sticky gecko feet, not only so that I can climb walls, but so that medical robots can hold delicate objects for the patients that they are caring for. And finally, the book that convinced me to become a nanotechnologist, Prey by Michael Crichton. Not only did it change my life as I became fascinated reading about rogue nanoparticles that were invading people's bodies, but it also moved my research into looking at nanoparticles for medicine. We can now create nanoparticles and coat or functionalize them with antibodies and then let them loose in the body. They hunt and they seek out the protein matched to their antibody coating, which in our case comes from cancer cells. This creates a new way to target these cancer cells and makes them easy to see by getting them to glow in the dark or what we call fluoresce by using a special type of light. The next step is to actually heat up these nanoparticles so they kill the very thing that they are attached to. They are attached to cancer cells and this gives us the ability to directly target and kill cancer cells without affecting other parts of the body. And this is one of the things I'm most excited about in the world of nanotechnology. And so, as a nanotechnologist, I and my fellow researchers are boldly going where no man or woman has gone before and showing that small things are shaping a really big future. Mm -hmm.